Hi, I'm Judy K. Moza, and I'm a dental practice management coach, speaker, and author. Well, I'm still seeing it exist, or I'd probably be out of work, so, and that's not happening. Um, I, I think that, uh, first of all, I think the, the title, just using the word conflict, scares so many people, and they run away from it. And, and instead of addressing the concerns or the issues in the practice, um, they let it go and they have this abundance of invisible elephants running around there in their office, sometimes an entire herd. I think it is, I think it depends on the practice. Um, I see a lot of, um, actually both, a disconnection between both. I think the minute um, something that happens that's a little uncomfortable, um, we have a tendency to label it as conflict, and so we shy away from it. We're afraid of how someone might respond if we actually address it. So we just let it go, and then it builds and builds and builds until all of a sudden there's this <laughs> big explosion. And then everybody's upset, and then we tiptoe around it again, and we never really resolve it. We don't talk about it. So when I work with practices, I go in and help them take the energy out of the difficult conversations and get rid of the drama and get rid of the gossip and get rid of the conflict. Well, I, I think it, first of all, if you're having a discussion about something before it happens, it's a lot less energy than when it's happening, than addressing. So actually creating standards before something happens, like how would we address this, how would we address conflict, having an actual process to address conflict, um, takes the energy out because then the entire team knows what to expect and as far as what, how they would address it and also be able to receive it. I, I, the first thing that I would do is I would, um, first of all, not tell anybody else about it. I would go directly to the source of the conflict or concern, and I would ask to speak with them, schedule a time to meet. Just because you're free at that moment doesn't mean that other person is. So ask for a time to meet. And, and then don't tell anybody, don't run around and tell the entire rest of the office that you're going to meet with Mary about what's, whatever it is. And then when you meet with that person, come with a very open mind and just say, you know, I'm not quite sure what happened today. Can we talk about it? Talk about the situation, not the person. And then once you ask that question, don't fill in the blank, just stop and wait and listen for their response. And then once they've given you the response, then it's a, it's a collaboration between you and that person to work out uh, by saying, okay, so here's what I need from you. What do you need from me so that we can work together successfully? And if the two of you can't work it out, then it's important for you to go and work with the doctor or the manager together as a team and say, how can we resolve this? What's your feedback that supports the patients in the practice? And I, I just want to say, just because you work together does not mean you have to be best friends. You have to respect each other, be professional, be kind to each other, but you don't have to agree with everything that they do in their personal life or be identical. We have that expectation sometimes that if they don't quite fit who we are, we don't get along, and, and that really has no place in it, because if it doesn't pertain to the patients in the practice, it doesn't belong in the practice. 